chapter twenty three of the adopting of rosa marie this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox the adopting of rosa marie by carol watson rankin taking a walk phew gasped jean wheeling as the north wind sweeping round the corner caught her square in the face i don't think much of that it's like ice ugh groaned marjorie i wish i'd stayed home mercy gulped henrietta it's blowing my skin off after that no one had very much to say the girls needed their breath for other purposes with heads down and jackets pulled tightly about them they started up the long hill with the wind in their faces it was not a pleasant wind cold and cutting it flung icy particles of snow against their cheeks nipped their unprotected ears stung their fingers and found the thin places in their garments it rushed down their throats when they opened their mouths to speak wrapped their petticoats so tightly about them that they had to keep on winding themselves in order to walk at all heaped the whirling snow in drifts and filled the air so full of flakes that it was only between gusts that the houses were visible worst of all the way was very much uphill and mabel besides being short of breath was burdened with the basket of eggs the snow seemed to take a delight in piling itself directly in front of them ugh gasped henrietta i wish my stockings were far lined they thawed out in mrs maloney's and now they're frozen stiff i don't like em mine too panted mabel and all my skirts groaned marjorie the edges are like saws and they're scraping my knees how do you like a real storm queried jean steering henrietta through a mighty drift not so well as i thought i should admitted henrietta i miss my blizzard clothes the streets when the girls finally reached the top of the hill were deserted even the sides of the houses looked like solid walls of snow for the wind had hurled the big flakes in gigantic handfuls against the buildings until they were all nicely coated with a thick frosting and so all the world was white and by the time the five girls reached jean's house for they finally accomplished that difficult feat they too were nicely plastered from head to heels with the clinging snow they looked like animated snowmen as they piled thankfully into mrs mapes's parlor the girls themselves were warm and glowing from the unusual exercise but their stockings and cotton skirts were frozen stiff henrietta will simply have to stay all night said mrs mapes discovering the wet stockings i sent the coachman home half an hour ago for the sake of the horses i'll telephone mrs slater that you're safe you other girls must go home at once and change your clothes before they thaw and jean you and henrietta must get into bed at once i'll bring you a hot supper inside of five minutes that'll be fun declared jean seizing henrietta's hand and making for the stairs good night girls i guess said marjorie when the mapes's door had closed behind betty mabel and herself jean and henrietta are going to be great chums i'm afraid so sighed betty i like henrietta but dear me i don't want jean to like her better than she does me she won't comforted marjorie henrietta's all right for a little while at a time but you're always nice thanks to mrs mapes's instructions none of the girls caught cold but their mothers were so afraid that they might that not one of them was permitted to poke her nose out of doors the next day to henrietta's delight the drifts reached the fence tops and until a huge plough drawn by six horses arranged in pairs had cleared the way the roads were impassable the wind after raging furiously all night had quieted down but the snow continued to fall in big soft clinging flakes every tree and shrub was weighted down with a heavy burden and all the world was white 
to henrietta who had never before seen snow in such abundance it was a most pleasing spectacle betty however was sorely troubled there was jean shut in with a tract of henrietta and getting chummier with her every minute there was betty a solitary person in a fuzzy red wrapper and bed slippers sighing for her beloved jean to be sure betty had brothers of assorted sizes and complexions but not one of them could fill jean's place in betty's troubled affections had betty but known it however jean was not having an entirely comfortable day it happened to be one of henrietta's frederica days the lively girl tormented bashful wallace by pretending that she herself was excessively shy and as shyness was not one of her attributes her victim was covered with confusion she teased and bewildered roger by chattering so rapidly in french that he couldn't understand a word she said although he had studied the language for three years under miss mcginnis and was proud of his progress a number of times she became so witty at jean's expense that sally had to rush to the rescue with profuse apologies also she disturbed both mr and mrs mapes by her extreme restlessness my sakes confided mrs mapes in the privacy of the kitchen whither she had fled for the sake of quiet i'm glad that girl doesn't belong to me she isn't still a minute perhaps said roger who had escaped on the pretext of blacking his shoes it's because she has traveled so much maybe she feels as if she had to keep going betty's certainly a great deal quieter agreed jean who looked tired and she doesn't talk all night when a body wants to sleep but henrietta's more fun you see you never know what she's going to do next but betty's always just the same at dinner time that day mrs mapes asked her husband if he knew whether the school board had accomplished anything at the meeting held the night previously no replied mr mapes a tall thin man with a preoccupied air and they never will as long as each one of them wants to put that schoolhouse in a different place they can't come to any sort of an agreement indeed the poor school board was having a perplexing time the citizens that lived at the north end of the town wanted the new school built there other taxpayers declared that the southern portion of lakeville being more densely populated offered a more suitable site then since the town stretched westward for a long distance a third group of persons were clamoring for the building in their part of the town besides all these there were persons who declared that the old site was the only place for a school building as the board itself was divided as to opinion it began to look as if lakeville would have to get along without a schoolhouse unless it could afford to build four and the taxpayer said it couldn't do that i wish said mrs mapes that i could find a first-class girls school within a reasonable distance if they don't have a proper building in lakeville by next september i'll send jean away that baptist cellar is damp and i know it besides i went to a boarding school myself and i'd like jean to have the experience i'll never forget those days send her suggested henrietta to the school i'm going to which one is that asked mrs mapes i don't know but grandmother says it mustn't be too far away she wants me within reach i think said mrs mapes reflectively i'll send for some catalogues the next morning the sun shone brightly on a glittering world henrietta went into ecstasies over it for even the tree trunk seemed encrusted with diamonds or at least rhinestones henrietta said the coachman arrived with the slater horses a little before nine o'clock and the two girls were carried off to school in state they waved their hands to betty as they passed her trudging in the snow and poor betty was suddenly conscious of a sharp twinge of jealousy now that henrietta had been properly called on and had returned the call she became a permanent part of all the cottagers plans thereafter there was hardly a day when one or another of the four girls did not see the fascinating maid of many names they always found her interesting 
attractive and entertaining yet there were days when she teased them almost to the limit of their endurance times when they could not quite approve her and moments when she fairly roused them to anger but in spite of her faults they could not help loving her because with all her impishness and her distressing lack of repose she was warm-hearted loyal and thoroughly true and although she possessed dozens of advantages that the other girls lacked although she was beautifully gowned splendidly housed and bountifully supplied with spending money never did she show in any way the faintest scrap of false pride she mentioned her life abroad in a simple matter-of-fact way as if it were a mere incident that might have happened to anybody but never in any boasting spirit her prankishness however kept her from being too good or too lovable for as her grandmother said she spared no one sometimes even jean who was a model of patience found it hard to forgive fun-loving frederica the disguised duchess End of chapter 23